Okay, so for probability density functions, I find it easiest to start by thinking about an example. So let's think about the time it takes someone to drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco, for example. So this, if we plot this, we know that, and this is the time on this axis here, uh, and let's say we just say the number of people who drive on a particular day. Um, well, we know that nobody's going to take negative time, um, and uh, probably if someone is breaking the speed limit, they might take five hours. So there'll be some people who take five hours. Uh, many more people will take six hours, um, and uh, probably some people will take a break and take seven hours more of them. I expect also some people will take a couple of hours break and take eight hours. Less people will be taking nine and probably not many take ten. So this is a, if we map it in terms of whole hours, then we'd have a histogram like this, where these are the number of people on that given day. Well, what if we, uh, so this is the number. Well, what if we take the number and divide by the total? Then all it does is to scale this axis and it gives us a percentage of the total. And now what if we were to say that we were going to not just do it on a particular day, but do it over every day of the year. And let's say we're not just going to take single integer hours, but let's say we're going to measure the time with seconds precision, or maybe even more accurate than seven seconds precision, maybe microseconds. Then we would have a curve that would be filled in. If it wasn't done on just whole hours, but just done with, in, let's say, infinite precision in time, we would have a curve that's filled in. And this is a function. And so this is where we have this probability density function idea first coming in. Now, in some cases, if the system is ergodic, uh, which we won't go into just here, but uh, in general, many systems are, then this is the same as uh, what you've got for a probability density function. So let's say you have a random variable x, and then you're going to have a probability density function. Now some people use little f for the probability density function, others use little p. I prefer to use little f. Now let's say your random variable is capital X. In this case, x was the, um, the, the uh, time it takes to travel between Los Angeles and San Francisco. We had that as t, uh, but in general, let's use the x for the random variable. And we denote that with a capital X as a subscript on our function. But this is a function of something. It's a function of the values that x can take. So in this case, uh, you often use little x in brackets. And this can be confusing notation, but let me just explain it again. We use little f to indicate that it's a probability density function. So that's little f to remind you it's a function. The subscript tells you it's the probability density function for this random variable, x. In this case, that random variable is the time to drive between San Francisco and Los Angeles, for example. But there's all sorts of other values, all sorts of other random variables. x could be the height of people, uh, a height of a person sitting on a train. Uh, it could be the, the uh, length of the person's feet as they come in, you know, whoever comes into a, a shoe shop, what's the length of their feet. Uh, it could be the maximum temperature on the 1st of March. Uh, anything that's random uh, is a, and, and has a numerical value that is a random variable. And so uh, we're just going to use x to indicate whichever random variable it is we're looking at. Uh, you might have y is a different one, z is a different one, however you label them. And the capital is the subscript to tell you that that's the probability density function for that random variable. And the thing in the brackets is simply what you plot against. So we could equally uh, change the little x to alpha here and call this plot with respect to alpha and change that to alpha. It would still be the probability density function for the random variable x. It's just you're using a different variable to plot it. And I think it's important to make that point uh, to hopefully explain um, what this is. The capital X tells you it's the, P the PDF, probability density function, for the random variable X. The thing in the brackets is just what you're plotting it against. And so in general, this can have a shape, any sort of uh, shape. 
Uh, in this case, the one I've drawn here, it, it has a possibility of having negative values. Over here, the time taken to drive between two cities is obviously never negative. Uh, in this case, other random variables could have negative values, and it could have a shape like this. Okay, now what exactly is this? Well, one thing we know about this is that the total area, I mean, what exactly is the PDF? What exactly is this curve telling us? Well, one thing we know is that the area under here equals one. It's a bit like this percentage here. All of them have to add up to one. So this area equals one. And in mathematics, that's an integral from negative infinity to infinity of fx, uh, x or alpha, whichever one we like to put, uh, d alpha. Or it could be fx, if we put a little x in here, dx. Okay, I'm just putting the alpha to show you that it's just the thing that we're plotting it against. So it's just the thing that we're integrating against. Okay, the capital X is the thing that tells you it's the PDF for that random variable. And so this total area equals one. This is something that we know. And I think this helps me to understand what this actual height of this curve actually is. Like, what does that number there actually mean? What is that actually telling me? Well, because it's imp once you go to infinite precision, the values of alpha here could be anything at all, any, any value with infinite precision. So actually, the exact probability of getting any of these values of alpha exactly is zero. It's kind of interesting concept when you think about it. If you've got infinite number of possible values that your random variable could take, then there's, with infinite values that it could possibly take, then the probability that getting any one of those values has got to be very, very small. It's actually got to be zero because if there's infinite number of those values. So therefore, we actually, it's better to think of this uh, as, a, uh, as a, a, an area here, a very, very thin, very, very small area. And hopefully now you'll see why I labeled this alpha because I'm going to call this, I'm going to pick this value x. So if I pick that value x, and a tiny little place next to it, a little distance along x plus dx, so where dx is very, very small, then the distance along there is dx. It's a very, very small distance. And the height of this is going to be fx of x. That actual height for that value of x, the height is fx of x. And we know and by the definition, this is I think the way to the best way to understand the probability density function. If we wanted to know the probability that our random variable is bigger than little x, it's bigger than that value, it's in, is it in this range, smaller than x plus dx. So what's the probability if we did a random sample of the cars, we pick a car at random and we say, how long did it take that particular car to drive between San Francisco and Los Angeles? So if we randomly pick a car, and we ask ourselves, what's the probability that the time that that car took was bigger than little x and smaller than little x plus dx, so it was in this range, then that equals the area of this, uh, this shaded area that I've drawn. So it equals the distance along the bottom, the distance along the bottom is dx, times the height, and the height was fx of x. Okay, so this is actually the definition of the probability density function. Okay, so it's a, it's a function. It has the property that for each little tiny segment, the, if you take the, the, the base times the height of that tiny rectangle, and infinitely small it's a rectangle because these two values become together when this is infinitely small. So the height times the base of that rectangle tells you the probability that your random variable is in that range. And that's the formal definition of the probability density function. Of course, once you see it like this, you can see that the integral is adding up all of those probabilities because that is this function here that I've just said. And if you add them all up, you equal one. So don't forget to like and share this uh, video and subscribe to the channel. It helps with uh, sharing the, uh, the descriptions for other, uh, other students and other people who are interested.